A quick, easy, simple, and conveniently cheap way to keep the heat in your trunk down, at least a little bit. Also, where to find your build codes on your C8 Corvette. So I know a big common problem a lot of people talk about C8 Corvette is when you have uh, something in your trunk and you have to keep it either moderately cool or somewhat temperature or basically not put it against anything hot. The big concern is groceries. You put a lot of groceries back there. If it's something that has to stay cold, it kind of heats up and then it ruins it and you have you know, your own problems with that. Now, of course, you can always put it in the front, but the front is also a little bit smaller. There is a way to take the trunk and make it a little bit cooler. I've seen reductions of about 30 degrees in temperature, give or take. Uh, I believe there are a couple other videos out there. I don't know, I've watched a few about people that actually sell um, insulation for this, but I'll show you an easier way to do it with simple supplies that you can get from Home Depot. Now, I'll show you that in a second. The first thing I want to do is another thing that I always see pop up is uh, people are always wondering about where can they find the build codes on their car. They look all over the place to find that codes with all those little alphanumeric codes about what packages and what things you have on the car. The you know Z51, 1LT, 2LT, 3LT. Then there's all the other ones like the you know QLI wheels or whatever it is. Honestly, I don't know. I don't have them all memorized. I, I don't really kind of care enough to memorize all of them. But paint codes and things like that, and you get what I'm saying. Now you can search high and low all over on this car, and you're not going to find that sheet anywhere. That's because it's kind of hidden within another sticker, and here's where you can find it. So what you're going to want to do. Just come over to your driver's side door, open it up, and find your sticker code down here. Now obviously that does not have all the codes on it, but you see that QR code right there? Scan it. If you scan that code, it will come up. You can then find your codes based off of that QR code. Now, I've heard of some people with iPhones basically have better luck um, scanning this. It usually works on iPhones a little bit better. I have not experienced that firsthand. Androids, it kind of seems to be hit or miss. I have an Android and it does not work on mine. But I've also known or come to find out that it, has, it will work if you have the Chevrolet app on your phone. However, I have not confirmed this. So um, I don't have the Chevrolet app on my phone. I haven't gone to that extent. But the way to get your, your codes is to scan that barcode. Um, as far as getting the end result of it, I'm sorry I don't have uh, the end result for you, but at least it's a good place to start. Now, the good news is if you have an iPhone, I've heard it does work, but again, I cannot confirm that. So, but anyways, now I'm gonna move on to the trunk. So there's a quick and easy way you can put some insulation on your trunk, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Costs about $15 in materials from Home Depot or any hardware store, and I'll put a link down to it below. It's a roll, you're gonna to have to cut it up and put it on, but it's relatively simple, and here's how. So as we all know, temperatures back here can get relatively warm. So what you wanna do is you wanna take this insulation piece out right back here, and you're gonna put some, or take this carpeted piece out right back here, and you're gonna put some insulation on the back of it. Put it on the top all the way across, all the way on the bottom. Again, it's not gonna make it to the point where it's completely cool as say the frunk, or a normal trunk, or anything like you've had on say a C7, if you had a previous one, or a C6, like the hatch area, but it will help a pretty good amount to the point where it is worth doing it. So pretty easy, all you gotta do is take this carpet out and I'll show you how to do it. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take, if you have, the cargo net out. I happen to have one, so of course I'm gonna take it out. Next, you're going to take these screws out. There's four of them on each one. Uh, these are the placeholders for the top when you take it off. It's just T15 screws. Just take them out, and it'll come right out. Very simple.
Then all you gotta do is come down here to where you have these two little uh, Christmas tree little plastic retainers in place. Just take a standard trim tool. I like to kind of wiggle them up a little bit side by side so that way the Christmas trees don't get damaged. And you're gonna take both of them off on each side. And of course move over to the other side. That's that. Once you have all those out, the only thing left to take out is these little screws that hold in the cargo nets. One on each side. One, two. You don't have to take the top ones out because it's not the same piece. And that's it. At that point, just lift and it comes right out. So these are the, this is the whole thing once you get it on. This is what it's going to look like. So you're going to have these three big, big pieces right in the middle. You can kind of see the width of it from there to about there. And that is the width of the roll that it comes in. I made one strip there, one strip in the middle, and one strip to the right. Then you had a little square on top right there and on the bottom to cover that. And that one as well, and on that side as well. So for measurement purposes, for those of you that are wondering for that, these little squares over here, this is going to be about, uh, I'll say about seven or seven and a half inches by about, also about seven and a half inches. And then this bottom piece down here, that was about, uh, probably about six inches by about probably about another five and a half or six inches on this side it's probably going to be about the same that was about uh looks like it's about six and a half on this side by about uh five and a half right there and then this one is going to be about eh, seven and a half give or take by about uh probably about another seven and a half this long pieces I don't have the length of because I already cut it and it's hard for me to measure it obviously while well, it's already rolled on, but just start at the top and work your way down. Now, I know there's gonna be plenty of comments about people and how, how I attached it there with duct tape. Um, I don't care. It, nobody's ever gonna see it. That's the way I wanted to put on. There are these pieces that are prefab that you can get that I'm sure are very, very good and they work very, very well, but it's like a $200 piece or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but you can get it. This was like 15 bucks. It was local at Home Depot. I was literally in Home Depot and I saw it and I said, eh, let me give it a try. So give it a try. It worked pretty well. The duct tape, I really don't care about. And if anything too, it just acts as extra insulation and it, help, and it holds on pretty well. So again, I probably saw maybe a 20 or 30 degree temperature difference with this stuff in there and it helped out quite a bit. So once you cut it, put it into place, I would say overlap it a little bit, tape it down and then just reinstall it exactly how you had it or exactly how it came out in the first place. Um, if anything else, just, uh, I don't know. Take it for what it's worth. It's a $15 roll from Home Depot, but for what it's worth, it, it does seem to work pretty well. So anyways, hope this helps. Good luck to you.